Hello and welcome to Premier Scene. I'm Charlie O'Brien and we're here on the red carpets in London's Leicester Square for the premiere of a documentary about a band who have sold more than 118 million albums worldwide. I'm talking about the legends that are status quo. The film is called Hello Quo. Is this your brainchild, Hello Quo? Is this your baby? It's my 10th movie. It's the first one I've done that's probably completely out the egg carton and it's different because I'm normally known for a certain kind of film and this is not one of them kind of films, but I'm really glad we did it. So it's described as a documentary, but that you know immediately thinks, makes you think, that's not going to be that exciting, but I'm guessing this is? Well, it's two hours, 25 minutes long. It's got everything in you could possibly wish for or hope for. And if you're a Quo fan like that bunch out there, I would imagine it's probably the best Christmas present you're ever going to get in October. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, it's good. Is this literally something for the die-hard Quo fans or can anyone get involved? I think it's for both audiences. I think we put we made it longer so the die-hard Quo fans got something they might not have had before. And then we also made sure there's a lot of things in there that made sure that once you're, you are talking directly to people about all this stuff, at least the people you're talking to that get it will get it. And the people who don't get it will have it that well explained that hopefully they'll get it too. So, you know, that was it. Now, hours of unseen footage, okay? These guys have been together forever. There's got to be some deep, dark secrets in here that we don't know about the quo. I think what we've done is try and put the record straight. I mean, give you one example. For years on end in every book and film and, you know, TV, radio, whatever they did, the concept was, you know, Alan Lancaster left the band because of Margarita Time. What, a grown man left a rock band for one three-minute song? No, I was never, I didn't buy into that ever, ever, ever. Uh, and we found out it's not true. But I won't say exactly why it is true, but it, let's just let's say we got the story right. Nice tease. There's a million other stories that we put right as well. So it has laid some ghosts to rest? I think it finally has. I think, this, you know, if you rattle the closet now, there's not as many skeletons in it. Are you excited about Hello Quo tonight? Uh, excited? Uh, yes and no. I, I, I just said to him that it's, it's about yourself, so it's very difficult to be objective. And, and we are insecure little shelves, all of us in show business, so to stand there and go, look, this is all about me, is kind of strange. I hope the fans like it, because that's who it's for. Is this warts and all, then? Yeah, pretty much. There might have been one or two warts taken out that, we, <laughs> that shouldn't be seen, but who knows? No, I've, what I've seen thus far is warts and all, yes. <laughs> So the old saying, what happens on tour stays on tour. Has this completely gone out of the window of this documentary? Yeah, pretty much, yes, pretty much. But obviously there are some things which you just can't talk about so far. <laughs> Is this just for die-hard Quo fans or, you know, people who perhaps don't know as much about you? You know, is this for them as well? Hopefully it's for what we call the peripheral fan that's, that knows us mainly for our hits and, and learns more about us. But again, uh, it may not be of interest to some people. It's very much... Very difficult for us to say that what well, this story about us is really good. I mean, you may find it rubbish, he may love it, you better love it. Just finally, OBE's, uh, you know, 50 years, 118 million albums worldwide, and now documentary. What else? Oh, there are more things to come, yeah. I mean, uh, we go into rehearsals next week and go back out on tour again, and uh, next year we're in Australia, and uh, there's another movie, a, pr a proper movie we've done, which is supposed to be a comedy. Hopefully, it is a comedy, and we'll talk about that next year. How excited are you about seeing Hello Quo tonight then? Well, not at all really, because we, we, we watched it we watched it at home the other night. But No, I mean, it, it gives off a, a, obviously a different atmosphere when you've got a, a theatre full of people. Well, obviously, uh, hopefully it will be full. And uh, it's good. I mean, when I've, when I've watched it on my own, you, you look at it objectively. But when, when I think you've got you know, a few hundred people around you, I think I'll just try and sit and enjoy it tonight, you know. Are you guys really great mates? Yes, we are. Genuinely, we are. I mean, uh, we couldn't do it if we weren't. And I think the secret of it is um, to, um, to give one another space <coughs> and uh, just enjoy it. Because you, you can't do what we do if you're not mates. You can't. Is this a real insight for Quo fans into the lives of status quo? Very much so, yeah. Very much so, uh, the, more so than before. Because... Um, uh, I think a lot of the fans maybe didn't quite understand the split and why it happened and uh, why we reformed and stuff like that. Uh, and I think this film really explains all that and puts all that to bed. Plus the fact, um, you know, it's great to be mates again with Alan and John after all these years and uh, who knows what may happen next. And how do you guys stay looking so young? I'm not just saying that. You do. Is it the beautiful lady on your arm that helps? Oh, well, of course. <laughs> 
I mean, there, there's no secret to it, other than the cream in the morning and the facelifts in the evening, you know. <laughs> but um, no, there's, there's no secret to it, and I'm very flattered. Thank you. I think this will be a real warts and all, and there's lots of warts and there's lots of all, so I think we're going to see a very good movie tonight. Yep. Are they great guys to work with? These guys are among the most professional of my clients. They really know how to go to work. Um, you know, they're never afraid of doing an interview, doing something that's going to help their career or help professionally around them what needs to get done. Um, and not only that, they've got a very good ethic for all the other things that go into their lives as well, their charitable work as they've been decorated by the Queen. You know, so th these, these are guys that you know, live in the moment, live what's around them, uh, but are really consummate professionals. How do you have time to have other clients when you represent status quo? Well, because that's what we do. <laughs> you must get asked this all the time and must get fed up with it, but what's it like to be the son of a status quo legend? Um, I think um, the negatives probably far outweigh the positives, uh, especially when growing up. It's quite a, quite a difficult ride, I think. Um, but um, uh, in later life, uh, the, all the respect has actually come a lot, a lot later, especially from friends and peers. And um, as I was saying before, I'm, I'm a musician as well, and so I work with a lot of the people who write in, in the current sort of industry and session players, and they all have a, a massive grudging respect. So um, it's, it's kind of come full circle, really, you know, so yeah. Growing up, were you aware that your dad was different to the other dads, or was it just normal for you? Are you kidding me? <laughs> yeah, of course. You know, I think um, when I got picked up from school, I think everyone else would turn up in a Volvo. I think my dad would turn up in a ball of flame or something like that. It was um, it was hilarious. And, uh, and of course, about five hours later than everyone else. Um, only the other day, I think it was my birthday, about four days ago, and... Um, Dad ma managed to phone up and just went, um, and halfway through the conversation, went, how old are you? You know, and I'm like, well, <laughs> it's amazing. No, so um, yeah, it's been very alternative. And um, the weird thing is, with with, with a father like um, mine, is and uh, it's 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 more of a friendship thing, I think, because he's uh, probably mentally younger than I am. So um, I, th I I think uh, if you've ever seen Ab Fab, I was definitely a Safi character. I think to uh, uh, his Adina. There you go. <laughs> So I spoke to your dad moments ago. He has seen it at home already. Have you seen Hello Quo yet, or is tonight the first time for you? No, I'm really looking forward to it, actually. It's, um, like, um, I'm very excited to sort of maybe learn a load of facts that perhaps I shouldn't know, and, um, and uh, hopefully someone um, I, I don't know about. Um, obviously, you know, I've, I've grown up with it, so I've, I've uh, picked up a lot of um, uh, stories from the past and etc but it's going to be really really nice to see a few other people who I respect so much I hear Jeff Lynn's in the uh, in the movie as well and he's my absolute hero so uh, for him to be giving a, a nod towards uh, the old man is is for me an absolute pleasure as well so it'll be great. Do you star in it at all in any way shape or form? <laughs> not that I'm aware of and I'm very much hoping not to as well so. <laughs> Just finally do you have status quo songs as your ringtone on your phone? <laughs> no. I don't even know what my ringtone is, actually. Um, but um, uh, if I had the choice, I probably wouldn't go with a quote tune. But um, yeah, well, who knows? Maybe after tonight I will. You know, there you go. Help bolster the coffers. There you go. So the band are all in. They're all here to see themselves in Hello Quo. And in among all the rumours of the fighting and the fallouts, everything seems to be fine. They seem to have resumed the status quo. I'm Charlie O'Brien. You've been watching Premier Scene. <laughs>